all the what's wrong with this? My favorite. Um, hi everyone, welcome back to English with Max. In this video, I'm going to talk about TV shows that could help you improve your English. In my last video, I talked about movies. If you haven't seen that video yet, I recommend that you first go and watch that because a lot of the things I said about movies also apply to TV shows. As usual, I'd like to remind you that you can follow me on social media. I have Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to hit the red subscribe button if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel. It's free, so why not? And remember that there are English subtitles available for all my videos. If you're watching this on a mobile device, you need to click the little three dots, the three little dots uh, in the corner and then click captions. If you're watching this on a computer, you either need to click the CC button um, or the little button that looks like a credit card. Thank you, Thomas, who is one of my viewers, for pointing that out to me. I knew the button looked different, but I didn't know how to describe it. Okay, let's get started. Firstly, let's look at some terminology. Some of you might be wondering why I've said TV show and not TV series. What's the difference? Often you can use them interchangeably. But in my mind, TV show is more generic and it refers to any program on television apart from the news and movies. These include fictional shows, game shows, shows about politics or documentaries. They might just be one episode or a series of episodes. And just so you know, in the UK and Australia, people often say TV program instead of TV show. A TV series is a type of TV show that has multiple episodes and often the same people or characters appearing in those episodes. And yes, series is plural and singular. One series two series, three series. And yes, we can just say series instead of TV series. Just like we can say show instead of TV show if it's clear that we're talking about television or something that appears on the internet. I think watching TV shows is generally more beneficial than watching movies. The first reason is that if you find a TV show that you really like, you might become addicted to it, so to speak, and you'll just continue watching because you want to know what happens. So you'll be working on your English, but it won't feel like work. Another reason is that series are typically a lot longer than movies. This allows you to get used to different characters' accents, and you'll probably hear the same words and phrases repeated a lot, which is good for your vocabulary. A lot of the things I said about movies are the same for TV shows. Dramas are generally easier than comedies. Very old shows are normally harder to understand than newer ones. When I say old, I mean 60 or 70 years old. Um, shows with regional accents are typically harder, and so are science fiction and fantasy. To give you some concrete examples, Game of Thrones is quite hard. That's mainly because it's fantasy and there are a lot of names and words that the author invented. Some of you might have also seen the series True Detective. I thought it was very good, um, at least the first season. I didn't see the second season because people told me not to bother. Um, but even I sometimes didn't understand every word. That's partly because it's set in Louisiana and lots of the characters had strong southern accents, but it's also because Matthew McConaughey mumbles. If you mumble, it means you don't open your mouth very wide and you don't articulate very well. 
I went to the beach yesterday and it was really great. There was like lots of sun and waves and everything, but I got lots of sand in my clothes and it was just, yeah, even in my underwear. I sometimes mumble as well, um, but not normally when I'm teaching English. So what do I think are some good TV shows for your English? Firstly, I think Friends is a good option. I know I said that comedies are often a bit difficult, but there are exceptions. And I think that Friends is definitely a lot easier than something like The Big Bang Theory, because there isn't all that scientific language. Even though I think that The Big Bang Theory is a better show. While we're on the topic of comedies, I also enjoyed Sex and the City. And I think that the actors normally speak quite clearly. Be careful though, it's for adults. I thought that Desperate Housewives was pretty good. And last year I watched a black comedy called Imposters, which was actually one of my favorite shows last year. Um, a black comedy is a comedy that has some darker or more serious elements. When it comes to dramas, last year I watched Broadchurch, which is a very good British crime drama. Uh, another good British show for working on your English is Dr. Martin. It's more a comedy drama. I also really liked Homeland, but I have a Spanish friend who said he found it a bit difficult to follow at times. Another popular drama was Mad Men. I only watched a few episodes because I found it a bit boring, but that's just me. Lots of people liked it, and I think it's relatively easy to understand. I've also heard very good things about Stranger Things. I haven't watched it, but I've seen clips of it, and the English doesn't appear to be too difficult. If you want to hear some Canadian English, you could watch Anne with an E, which is based on the book Anne of Green Gables. I watched it recently on Netflix. If you like soap operas or telenovelas, telenovelas, uh, you might like shows like um, Beverly Hills 90210, The O.C., Party of Five, Dawson's Creek, or Felicity. All of those shows are a bit old now. They're about 15 to 20 years old. I'm not really sure which soap operas or family dramas are popular right now. I didn't watch all of those. I only watched part of Dawson's Creek and I did watch Felicity. But I think Felicity was a little better than your average soap opera. Something else that you can watch is reality TV. I know a lot of people turn their nose up at reality TV because it's not considered very intellectual, but I think some shows are a bit better than others. Reality TV shows are shows in which there are no actors. It's just real people being filmed doing various things. Of course, there's some debate about how real it actually is, but that's another topic. Reality TV can be useful for learning English because you hear how people speak in real life. This has its advantages and disadvantages. It's good because you hear natural English but some of the people on these shows speak very badly. Nothing's perfect. I admit that I watch some reality TV. My favorite reality TV series is The Amazing Race, which is basically a race around the world, so you get to see lots of different countries. I also like Survivor. And I admit that last year I even watched parts of The Bachelor. Oh, the shame. Another show I can recommend is called Extreme Cheapskates. A cheapskate is a person who is stingy. Someone who really doesn't like spending money, in other words. Lots of the episodes are on YouTube. It's really quite hilarious at times. Finally, you could watch game shows. Game shows are just shows in which there's a game that regular people participate in. 
For example, Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune. My favorite game show is The Chase. If you like trivia or you like expanding your general knowledge and you really want to expand your English vocabulary, then I can highly recommend The Chase. I recommend the British version and the Australian version. There are lots of episodes on YouTube. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll put the names of all the shows I've mentioned in the description box. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them in the comments. And also, please tell me what your favorite TV shows are. Um, don't forget to hit the thumbs up if you like the video. And as usual, please share this with your friends. See you next time. I think that the big that I think that the big thank. Fuck. He is old. <laughs>